introduction. I'm going to move the microphone, give me a thumbs up for this. I love to love. All right. I'll try to hold it right about here. Um, the, to start out, I'm going to cover a new publication that we put together. Uh, Christy and I worked with a couple other weed scientists, put together this weed ID guide for field crops. And what it is is just a little pocket guide. Uh, fits right in the back pocket of your, you know, your jeans, your pants, whatever. Uh, I think it worked good just sitting in your truck, throw it in the door, uh, in the console, whatever. It's spiral bound and it's got uh, where you can just fold it back on itself, which I think is a nice little option because every time you're idea in a weed, it seems like it's windy. And if you're holding a book, the wind tends to blow those pages. Uh, the other thing with this is the pages are a uh, type of a PVC type of a plastic. Um, so they're real sturdy. Like you can pull on it. Uh, my technician, he's about 6'6", six, six, big guy. Um, when we first were putting these together, uh, I wanted to go with these little bit thicker pages and he thought it was going to be too bulky. And I said, well, it'd be nice so you don't tear it. And uh, he, he pulled on it good. Uh, it'll crinkle, but it actually didn't tear. Um, so I think that's a good thing. It won't water wise it won't get wet you know should last a long time won't be something you have to buy every year uh, but i'll go through just how we set it up i'll pass this one around around so uh you guys can look at it and uh get an idea what it looks like so to start out with the layout uh, every time i use the pointer a little box will pop up so i get to jump up here and point at what i'm talking about uh, here's an example for lamb's quarters, and uh, generally we try to keep it at about two pages for each weed, and what we have are the different characteristics. So here's the common and scientific names for uh, each weed, and one thing we put was the shapes for the cotyledon and the leaf. So as you thumb through the book, uh, you can have an opportunity to kind of identify it by those shapes. You know, every other weed ID guide I have, you sit there and, okay, you can go to the index and look it up, but it, if you knew what it was, you wouldn't be looking in the book, right? So, <laughs> the way I always look at them is I just, you know, turn it on the side and just flip through the pages till I see what I think looks right. I, you know, by putting this in the corner, hopefully, you can kind of flip along, and then we also have it um, in the key and we have this online also, so you, you can break it down by the different characteristics there. We also include the life cycle, whether it's an annual, summer, winter annual, is it a biannual or a perennial weed. And then we have the description for the leaves. And you can see here for this, uh, this is just the heading, but this whole section is talking about the leaves of that lamb's quarters. Uh, what do the cotyledons look like? Is there hairs on the leaves? Um, what's the shape? What do they look like when they're little, mature, all that. Uh, so quite a bit of detail there. And then also uh, the family name, as well as a color coding for the family. So, it, and that's how the uh, guide is arranged by families. So usually the weeds that look the same are about, are usually in the same family at least. <clears throat> then we go on to discuss the stems. Are they upright? Is it flat laying, are the stems square, do they have ridges, is it smooth, hairy, all that is included. Uh, the fruits and the flowers, so what color is the flower, what does it look like? Uh, we try to have a picture of at least either the seeds or the flower, in that case there with lamb's quarters. Um, and so that's the general layout there, uh, also talk about how it reproduces. So if it is like quack grass where it re reproduces by those uh, rhizomes, you know that as well. Here is the web page and how it is laid out. And what we have is the grasses here by ligule type. And the, the different grasses we have are listed there. And then the cotyledon shape. And under each shape is the are the weeds that correspond to it. Uh, going on to the next page. And then the leaf margins. So depending on what the cotyledon shape is and what the leaf looks like, if you know one or the other or both, you can narrow it down pretty quick to what weed you might have. For the grasses, uh, the main area we tend to look at is this collar region, what we call the collar because of it looks like 
somebody's collar here, right? Um, the uh, legal is the first thing we tend to look at. Uh, is it absent? Is it membranous? Is it hairy? Uh, we'll look at the sheath. Sometimes uh, hairs being there will help us identify. And then these oracles, which quackgrass has, um, and some of the other uh, winter grasses, your cool season grasses, we'll see with these oracles. Um, those are kind of some of the identifying characteristics. But our guide is broke down by the different membranes, or different legules, uh, whether it's absent, membranous, or hairy. And um, I guess to kind of give you guys an idea, uh, here's where those clickers I handed out earlier will come in. Um, we'll see if we can identify the different legule types. Uh, so for a giant foxtail, here is the collar region I talked about, like the sheath, and then right here is where the legule is. Uh, is it absent, membranous, or hairy? And it might be kind of hard, it's a little light, but right here is what we're looking at. Let's see what you guys think. I can't trace the answers back to who says what, so no worries on <laughs> wrong answers. In fact, it'll help us to you know kind of determine if you know how much of this stuff you guys. It's useful. Uh, that's some of the questions I'll have. But also, if you guys get all these right, maybe you don't need a guy to help you out. So we got about 50 answers so far. We'll start out with this one, see how we do. All right, uh, so 62% got hairy. Either you got really good eyes or you know what foxtail looks like uh, anyway. Uh, another one is barnyard grass. And so the same order, absent membranous hairy, and here's the collar region um, where we'd be looking at. So let's see what you guys think with this one. So this one's a, a little more split, uh, 40 and 49%. Uh, this one is actually absent. Uh, it's pretty hard to see with this picture, but barnyard grass, if you really look at it, there won't be a lake over there. Um, so I know with the pictures in the room, we'll, we'll give you a pass on this one today. <laughs> uh, so getting on to the broad leaves, just some real quick uh, characteristics. Uh, you know, we got the cotyledons, which are those first leaves that'll come out. And right below them is the hypocotyl. So if you think of like a soybean, that hypocotyl pushes up first, and then those cotyledons open up. And then we start to see the leaves come up, whether they're simple leaves, where you just have one leaf per uh, stalk, which is a petiole, or you have multiple leaflets, uh, where you'll have you know, two, three, four, five, depending on the uh, plant. Then we also have here uh, the arrangement of the leaves, whether they're alternate, coming down the stem or their opposite. Uh, another thing, uh, even though as far as this talk really doesn't matter, but uh, I like to point out that okrea is that uh, kind of a membranous papery wrapping around both the stem and the petiole. And you'll see that with the smart weeds. Uh, buckwheat is another one that'll have that, uh, just as a point of reference. Then we get to our cotyledon shapes, and as you can see, you know, botanists are pretty creative with their names uh, when it comes to naming shapes. You know, so if it's kind of pointy, it's lance shape. If it looks like a kidney, we call it kidney shape. Uh, if it looks like an egg, I guess we call it egg shape. Spatula shape, <coughs> oval, <laughs> linear, oblong, and round. Um, I've, I've, I tried to make a joke a couple days ago on this and said, you know, I think a five-year-old could name these. And somebody said, well, you think we're not smarter than five-year-olds? And I was like, no, I didn't mean <laughs> I think a five-year-old could call that an oval. <laughs> but um, anyway, I wanted to see, as far as picking these out, um, when you're identifying them, how easy is it to determine if it's round, oval, linear, or oblong. And this is red root pigweed, and here are the cod leads for this one, uh, running this way. Uh, so which one of these do you think it is? And 
I'll say this one is tough uh, between two choices for sure. choices, uh, linear and oblong, and this one is actually <coughs> linear uh, because more of the tapering to the point, is, especially you can see with this one, the oblong will be a little bit fatter. Um, so it, it's a little tougher to tell these apart, um, and I guess I just kind of want to show like where, where the fine lines in some of this can be in determining what you have going on. Now one, uh, another one that's pretty common is common ragweed. So which one of these do you think the cotyledons are? And that's this and this one here. Uh, oh, you guys are going fast on this one. We got up to 60, so a little more confident in the choice. Yep, 77% got it right, oval. Um, and that one, you can see just how it looks, so it's a little easier. So each of the weeds will be you know, difficult or easy depending on their shapes. Now, as far as leaf margins, again, you know, very complicated in our names, smooth, lobed, serrated or toothed, dissected or wavy um, are the choices that we generally break it down into. And so, just working with the uh, common ragweed, how would you, um, I guess, classify these? Is it dissected, smooth, lobed, or serrated? for the leaves, those there. All right, let's see what it came up with. Wow, really good, 68% guy, right, dissected. Um, lobe would be a little bit more complete lobes. You can see as this breaks in a little more, and if you think of the common ragweed as it gets bigger, even these little, these little parts here will have indentations. It'll be a lot more dissected and cut up. Um, so good. Now I was going to see if we can identify a weed that isn't very common here in Michigan. It is in the guide uh, because you can find it in places, but um, really uh, see what this is. So we'll start with the cotyledon shape, which here are the cotyledons. So what would you pick, uh, round, oval, kidney, or oblong for these two here? All right, let's see. Excellent, 93% got his kidney. I realized the other day when I was doing this that I don't know what I would do if people got it wrong because I based this slide off of getting it right. <laughs> But uh, thankfully everybody, you know, most everybody saw this kidney. And you'll see most of these here are morning glories. And in fact, the bindweeds, field and hedge bindweed, are in the morning glory family. Uh, the one outside of that family is wild mustard. And so here would be your choices to go on to the leaf margin part. And you can pick this out, you know, off of the website and stuff to determine. So as you would go and look at the different leaves, which one would you end up saying we had? And pretty quick you could pick out the ivy leaf with those big lobe leaves. And so the weed that I showed there was ivy leaf morning glory. Um, so just some questions about the guide, uh, just what I've showed you and as you've gotten a look at it as, be, as it's being passed around. You know, for what I showed, especially that page with the lambs quarters, do you think this would have too much detail, about the right amount, or too little? Something where you'd like to see more detail, um, maybe a little less detail. Um, really try to get your feedback so we can shape where we go with some of this stuff in the future. is weed ID to you uh, in what you do every day. Is it important, somewhat important, or not important? Uh, is this even something that would concern you? 
uh, in your day-to-day -day activities. It's good to see it's important. I know especially, this is an easy one to throw up there after Christy shows that uh, Palmer Amherst showing up in Michigan, so uh, a little bit more of a uh, worry. So do you think this guy would be useful uh, to you? Yes, no, or maybe? Um, is this something that you would actually use? And here's the information on how to uh, order these. Um, it's bulletin E3081. It's $16, but it's actually uh, cheaper. If you get 10 or more together, the price drops at $12.50 each. So if you get a group of people together, come up with a bulk order, uh, it'll be cut way down. And then here's the phone number, it's 517-353-6740 to the Bulletin Office. And if you go online to ipm.msu.edu, uh, right on their homepage, it's where the Catalert articles are. They have a link to the guide and the online guide, so you can get on there and do all this online. We have it all available, at least the images and the breakdown uh, available right there, so you wouldn't have to by the guy, but it's, if you could take the weed to the computer, I guess. Um, all right, so are there any questions about that? I'm going to switch it over to the rest of the info.